contain Lamar. <laughs> as we know, does yeah. it all with his feet and his and his legs, but just how do you contain him without giving your game plan away? Yeah, no, it's um, it's really about uh, responsibility. Everybody has to execute their job. There's a lot of things they do just in terms of misdirection. Um, but the main thing with their offense is they really play with 11 because the quarterback runs it. So you have to play with 11. So there's a couple of things we can do, um, but we're going to have to use all of them in order to slow them down. So it looked like the run defense still had a couple of issues mm -hmm. against the Lions. Um, was it the same thing that bothered you guys against New England? And then how will Baltimore kind of challenge that? Um, we knew they were going to run the ball. Uh, they changed with Coach Campbell when he took over, and they're committed more to the run. They were committed more to the run. Uh, the long run on third down kind of hurt us. Uh, you take that run out, and then it's kind of normal based on what they were doing. But it still comes down to this gap control. Uh, we had some missed tackles in, in the open field. So guys just have to do a better job just in space getting guys on the ground. How has Lamar kind of grown since he's come in the league? I know you obviously always have been in the AFC North and played against him. Yeah. How has he grown? Yeah, I remember uh, when Flacco was there, we played against him uh, when I was in Denver. But he was just coming in on a few snaps. But you could see he was different. And I think just with each year, um, definitely with that system, they're going to tailor it to what he does best. I think he's throwing the ball a lot better, probably than he was early in his career. So I think overall, with, with the run game, what they're doing in the pass game, makes it very difficult to defend them. They're, uh, they're a team that they played some tight games this year. They've yeah. won tight mm -hmm. games, and they're a come from behind team. Right. What, what do you see from them, especially in the second half and that fourth quarter, from an offensive perspective that's, that, that's made them better in those moments, maybe rather than earlier in the game? A combination of what they do in the run game and the play action puts a lot of stress on, stress on you in coverage. This guy's trying to get to their fit, and then now you got something behind you. Um, then when they get in the fourth quarter and open it up, you know, he's doing a good job just in terms of throwing the ball. Uh, they have weapons all over the field at the wide receiver position, at the tight end position. Um, and you can see those things come alive in those situations where they're, where they're coming back. When you're, when you're preparing for something like that, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, even if you took an early lead, they might have that ability to mm -hmm. bounce back. How do you prepare through practice and heading into that game for those scenarios? Yeah, I, I just think that's a, a weekly thing. I don't think it's anything unique uh, to Baltimore. I mean, any game that we played, we jumped out to a lead, teams come back. I think it's really just relying on what you game plan and guys just executing. You just don't want to put more pressure on yourself. It's just go out, execute your coverage. The situation doesn't matter. Just do the same thing that puts you in a position where you have that lead. Hey, Joe, when you see Miami do as much cover zero as mm -hmm. they did against Baltimore, mm -hmm. does that make you think about changing your plan at all? Not really. I, I think whether you're on offense or defense, it's a it's a copycat league. So whatever you see that's effective against somebody, uh, you try to put it into your game plan if it fits. Um, you know, we're going to stick with our game plan. We have things like that. But, you know, we're, we're definitely not trying to be Miami. Uh, um, but we'll have some different change-ups. How much cover zero would you say you've run this year? Um, overall, probably around 10 snaps, a little less than 10. But it's more situational when we call it. It may not look like zero, but we're we're in zero. I mean, the danger there is somebody gets behind your guy and it's a touchdown, right? Yeah, but it's you call man coverage the same thing. So you know we're not afraid of it. Um, we just try to use it in a timely manner. Jordan Hill returned to practice on a mm -hmm. basis. Is he expecting to have him available to you in any capacity during the game, and do you expect to be able to use him the way you'd like to? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and we have to continue to watch him uh, these next two days but I anticipate that he'll be available to us. Joe, I know there's been a handful of times this year where Miles has kind of dropped back in the coverage. I think mm -hmm. it's like seven total snaps. Yeah. I guess when you have a pass rusher as good as him, mm -hmm. why does it make sense to do that occasionally and bring him in coverage? It's, I always talk to those guys about that. It's about the mix. So if they want to take all their coverage or all their protection to him, then we'll come off the other side and make them make a decision. So you have to do that every now and then, and that's you know less than one time a game based on where we're at. But just to make them play honest. What makes uh, Mark Andrews so effective for them? He can do it all. Uh, this really, just his ability to catch the ball. Um, he's big. He can run. He's athletic. Uh, you can see it all over the field. You know, when in doubt, he's going to get the ball. But he is tough to defend. But I feel like we have guys that can match up against him just because of the size. Is Grant one of those guys? And how have you seen him kind of develop 
throughout this season? Yeah, Grant's definitely getting better. Um, a lot of this stuff for this this year for him is we're kind of finding out about him every game. Uh, we didn't have that opportunity last year. So there's things that we try to fix that we should see that show up on tape. Um, but I think he's progressing well, and uh, he's fitting into the system the way I thought he would. Have you, have you been able to use kind of that three safety look or that big dime, whatever you want to call it, as much as you've wanted this year? Yes. And some of the teams are, you know, last last week with, on third down with Detroit, I think there was five runs, two screens, two quicks on 11. So 9 and 11 plays. They really weren't going to let us kind of affect them so you just play a little more coverage, protect yourself against the run. Um, but, yeah, I've used it as like I – Thought I was going to. Joe, um, Kevin said that Ronnie didn't start because it was disciplinary. Yeah. Um, just what's your view of, of the last you know week for Ronnie? And, yeah. You know, did, did he learn from it, or did you have a good conversation, or is it wait and see? Yeah. No, Ronnie's. You know, everybody. It's you get a little chippy <laughs> as you go through the season. I mean, it's a long season, but we just have to do things the right way. And, uh, you know, it was a disciplinary situation that uh, Coach handled internally. Uh, Ronnie's fine. He came out. He's had a great week of practice at this point. So I don't think there will be any effects from what happened. And with JOK, we know that he had the high ankle and yeah. missed the games and came back and yeah. left the game Sunday. Yeah. What's he looking like this week to you? And what percentage do you think you have of him? Right yeah, he's he's better. He's running around. He's fighting through it. So we'll definitely have him for the game. And uh, is he the whole way 100%? Uh, probably not. But... You know, him at 90, 95% is pretty good. Do you think he'll attack? Uh, it's looking that way. Again, what, just, what can he give you, that third you know, that third edge rusher you were hoping to have all year? It's just explosive. He gives us versatility. We can move guys around. He can play outside, inside. But just the athleticism he brings uh, definitely be a bonus against these guys. How do you size up the season Denzel Ward's put together for you? I know early on yeah. you talked about him maybe trying to do too much. And yeah. We've seen him make some big plays in the last yeah. few weeks. You can see uh, what he's capable of doing. Um, Denzel, for me, has a lane, size, speed, quickness that you look for in the number one corner. Uh, but you can't press and try to make plays. And I think early in the season, he was trying to do that, or his technique, his eye discipline wasn't there. But I think now he's starting to settle down, and you're seeing him making some you know, impactful plays in games. Why do you think he was pressing? Just wanting to be the playmaker for us. You know, we have playmakers at, at all three levels of our defense. You just have to do your job and make the plays you're supposed to make. And uh, when they come your way, if you play proper technique, then you'll make those plays. We, we saw you use Craig a little bit mm -hmm. in that nickel spot with Troy out. And, uh, mm -hmm. we're running there too. But Craig, being able to do both, kind of play inside and outside, how has he come along being asked to do that? Yeah, he's, he's doing a great job. And we trained him from the first time he got here, from the off season on. This being a versatile corner. So we had visions of him playing either inside nickel or if we want to put four corners on the field, you know, and go with our quarter package. Um, so he's done a nice job, and I think it was big for him just in terms of confidence booster uh, playing inside last week and doing a nice job.